My name is uh, Councilmember uh, Ben Kalos. I want to start off by uh, saying first a big thank you to uh, Jonathan Askin uh, for having me at his legal hackathon and for hosting so many legal hackathons. It wasn't his first and it certainly won't be his last. And uh, that's where I got to uh, meet Daza Greenwood and I want to thank him and MIT Media Lab who convened this illustrious group including uh, Seamus Kraft and Bill Hunt of OpenGov Foundation, Thomas Neal and Rebecca Williams of Sunlight Foundation, David Moore of Participatory Politics Foundation, uh, my fellow elected officials, New York City Council Member Brad Lander and San Francisco Supervisor Mark Farrell, as well as peers in Boston, Chicago and the District of Columbia. Most importantly, all of you who have joined us today online and in person. Council Member Ben Kalos, you can reach me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and my GitHub repo at Ben Kalos, B-E-N-K-A-L-L-O-S. Uh, please take out your phones or tablets or laptops or assuming you're on all that, but that's how I know you're paying attention and uh, how I know that the world can participate in what we're doing here today. I'm an attorney, free and open source software developer, and now a New York City Council member. Before we can move forward, it's important to know how we got here, so please join me in a journey 3,786 years back in time through legal history to 1772 before the common area, and yes, there's an app for that. Uh, Hammurabi sought to bring about the rule in the land by placing more than 282 laws on seven foot tall daira steel. Uh, these laws were set by a king. Within a century, uh, monotheism would emerge uh, with Ten Commandments inscribed in tablets and 613 laws codified among the stories of the Jewish people and five books written by a religious leader. By the 5th century before the Common Era, we see direct democracy in Athens, Greece for adult citizen men who have completed military service. In approximately 450 before the Common Era, the Romans would adopt 12 tables in response to uh, Sesso Plebis or general strike by the plebeian citizens. The march of history continues, the law, who makes the law, how the law is made, the accessibility of the law, and the fair application of that law continues to waver to and fro as the people struggle for the power contained therein. However, new technology and the birth of information age provides a unique moment for change, change at an exponential rate that can outpace Moore's law. Following the birth of the World Wide Web, Congress empowered the Library of Congress to create thomas.loc.gov in 1995, so now we could actually read federal law and follow legislation online. By the time I graduated law school in 2005, a decade later, the laws at a local level were not accessible. I realized that our state and municipal laws, those that affect us on the most local levels, were locked behind the Westlaw and LexisNexis, aka Wexis, paywalls leaving me wondering how could anyone be expected to obey the laws they couldn't freely access. In 2006, I set out to get them online by founding wikilaw.org to set the law free online. Soon after, I would come to the same realization as Lawrence Lessig, special interests of the legal publishing companies and the entire legal profession had a strong interest in keeping the law out of the hands of the people and that under current political system, the laws were not serving the public interest but special interests. I quickly merged my project with Juristpedia.org and went to work in changing government through political activism. In 2007, the next step in the right direction was OpenCongress.org, a project of Participatory Politics Foundation and Sunlight Foundation, where you can read, comment, and improve upon federal legislation. It proved that nonprofits and civic hackers could join together in order to modernize our government. In 2009, I launched OpenLegislation.org, with Tom Neal to make New York State's legislation public and it was so disruptive that city and state legislatures ended up doing so themselves. By 2013, Tom Neal had joined Sunlight Foundation and worked with his team to bring that same transparency nationwide with OpenStates.org. In 2013, I ran for city council, crowdsourced my platform on kalisforcouncil.com. I started with 100 solutions and collected 33 solutions from the community. We also posted our platform to get hope to github.com slash Kalos for Council, and everything is now on bencalos.com. It's a Drupal 6 build that I maintain myself. I won. Now I'm in the New York City Council, 
I've introduced disruptive legislation to dramatically change the way government operates. Free and open source software preference models on state laws are already put in place in New Hampshire by Seth Cohn and in Oklahoma by Jason Murphy and federal legislation proposed by Congressman Darrell Issa. Civic Commons to create a centralized code repository for the free and open source software that will be operating our government. OpenFOIL to bolster New York's open data law, ensuring compliance with freedom of information requests using transparency and to drive more content into our open data portal through one strike and you're in. Electronic notices requiring notifications through a central portal in computer readable format so that public notice is more accessible than a cork board or periodical available only in government offices. Also a public online information act because in the 21st century public information must equal online. And that's just my opening salvo. Under the leadership of Council Member Brad Lander, we've adopted broad sweeping rules reforms and proposed legislation to open up our laws. We're demanding that vendors open up the APIs that host the legislation so that you can do whatever you want with it. I have a declaration of independence of law. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that laws are wholesome and necessary for the public good, that ignorantia juris non excusat is a maxim of universal application that every man is presumed to know the law, and it would seem inherent that freedom of access to the laws or the official interpretation of those laws should be coextensive with the sweep of the maximum. Knowledge is the only just condition of obedience, that such material as the laws and governmental <coughs> rules and decisions must be freely available to the public and made known as widely as possible. Hence, there must be no restriction on the reproduction and dissemination of such documents. We find that despite our aspirations, our system of government is no longer free to the governed to access in the method of the times. The law belongs to you. What does it mean to hack the law? Code runs on our software like web browsers, uh, and it is often best, just like Firefox, when the code is free, free to study the source code, free to customize, modify, and improve upon, and free to redistribute. Legal code is the source code that operates our government for far too long that has not been free. Code should be free, free to study, free to customize, free to prove upon, and free to redistribute. The law is not immutable. It is a living and breathing, ever-changing, and in the end, it affects every moment of your daily life. The legal code is iterative as software. We start with the laws. We modify them with legislation, pass that legislation into new laws, then begin the process anew when those new laws are enforced or not. Developers like us are privileged because we have something unique to offer the world. We have the tools to help provide citizens who have the right to access, to understand, shift, and yes, hack the law with the tools they need. We can create progress to provide open APIs to empower developers to share civic data in user-friendly formats, like Sunlight Foundation has done with OpenStates.org. We can create programs to allow the public to find, a, find and comment on legislation, like Participatory Politics Foundation has done with OpenCongress.org and Councilmatic. We can share state laws in easily accessible, searchable, and understandable formats for free because the law should be free, like Open Gov Foundation has done with states decoded. We can draft and authenticate legal code because we must work from the most up-to-date legal code using free and open source software developed by cities like Washington, D.C. Or we can create an architecture to put these tools together with free and open source software that cities, states, and every municipality across the nation can use for their own legislative websites. And in fact, that is the challenge that I wish to issue for you today. In 1961, President John F. Kennedy demonstrated the use to us the value of setting goals when he declared, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieve the goal before this de decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. In 1969, the United States of America's Apollo 11 mission did just that. Today, 
I set a similar challenge. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before the year is out of building Democracy 2.0, a free and open source democracy platform. Please join me in building the spaceship democracy. After this, when we break off into hacking sessions to try to achieve the goal that we're talking about right now, I ask you to join me in developing architecture for this Democracy 2.0 platform that we can share with every legislature and municipal government in the United States. The platform would architecture for allowing legislators to easily access these needed features. It is my sincerest hope that we can reconvene in the fall to test and demonstrate a minimum viable product and MVP as we build towards a release of Democracy 2.0, a free and open source democracy platform next year. It is now my honor to introduce somebody who's actually been my inspiration, <coughs> Supervisor Mark Farrell. He's a leader in San Francisco on free and open source as well as making the government there is more transparent and uh, I, I hope that together New York City and San Francisco will be able to have a long partnership of working together to bring Democracy 2.0, Government 2.0 and in our cases legislators, legislatures 2.0 so that everyone in the country can achieve and appreciate the same type of democracy that Mark and I are trying to bring to our cities.